landed feeding off a dead whale. Now, the amazing part is, according to Mundus, this was not the only shark out there at the time. According to him, they more or less had their choice of some six to eight great whites. That whale was only dead for 24 hours before we found him. So, I mean, when you really think about it, it's amazing that, that we do have that many white sharks in this area. In Montauk, Matt Sesney News, 55. Man, Dude. you know, and he, and, and you know, Frank Mundus <laughs> sounded drunk as a skunk. He oh sounded a hammer, I know. Dude, he's been drinking oh. since 7 a.m. Oh, man. Now, the, you know, the thing about Frank Mundus and Quint, you know, um, I guess, it, it, you know, uh, Peter Benchley says he, he went out on Mundus's charter and, you know, he was basically, he was, he was Quint. Right. There was another guy too that they um he was in the movie, he played Ben Gardner. That I got uh, it. I also I got it. Yeah. Yep. You know, I there's a theory, it. there's a theory out there that when Ben Gardner was killed, it wasn't the shark that killed Ben Gardner, it was Quint who killed Ben Gardner because he was a rival fisherman and he didn't want him to get the money for killing the shark. Um, that's that's deep, bro. I never heard that one. That's deep. So I mean, if you think about if you think about it, you know, how could a shark gouge out his eye? You know? Right. But then Hooper did find the tooth. So I, Here, I, ben, know, there's there's Ben Gardner. That, that that's, now yeah. this is this is one of the things that upon watching the movie the other night. In my notes, I never connected that Ben Gardner was in the film before, you know, uh, Ben Gardner's the, the Ben Gardner's head scene. Which, for those that may need a reminder, here you go. You know that 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 bit. I never realized um, until I watched it the other day. Because when you when you, when you watch it on whatever it is Amazon, when you pause it. It tells you who the actors are in the scene, you know, who they're playing. And when Hooper shows up in the boat and gets out of the boat and he goes, hello. And 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 Ben Gardner goes back to him, hello to you, young fella. Yeah, like, that's... I never realized, I, I always thought that, oh, that's Ben Gardner's boat. Like, just, you know, he sort of recognized the boat. I had no idea that Ben Gardner actually is that character that shows up in the film earlier. Yeah, and he was, uh, he's from the island and he was right. just someone who was i guess helping out but uh, spielberg liked him so much that he put him in the movie and um and i can't remember his real name uh, but he's in the documentary too and his daughter tells stories about him but i think a lot of the quint stuff came from him in real life um but yeah if you look at that you know his eyes kind of gouged out and how, <laughs> yeah i don't know yeah. i don't know man I don't know. So yeah. maybe, maybe it was Quint who who actually killed him. Yeah, it 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 it, it, it kind of makes sense. And here he is, uh, Robert Shaw. Robert Shaw has always been one of my favorite actors. I mean, uh, he he's he he was he's one of my favorites in, in everything everything that he he did. He did so much. So you know what he was in a film, and I remember another film from when we were when we were uh, kids. Uh, I think it was called Black Sunday. Um, yeah, it was like football. a terrorist, terrorist film, yeah. football stadium. He, yep. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, and of course, the taking of Pelham one, two, three, right? That's right. He was in that, too. Uh, he always played a villain in, yeah. in a sense. But I never, you know, after. After, you know, watching Jaws for all these years, you, you, you've come to, to like Quint and uh, yeah. There's a deleted scene that they don't they didn't put in the movie, and it's a scene where the first appearance of Quint and he gets out of his truck and he goes into the music store and he buys piano wire and there's a little boy practicing his sax uh, his clarinet and Quint is just on this kid like this is how it should go and he's like ba 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 finally the kid just stops playing it's it's a great scene I don't know why I've never it wasn't seen in the that movie it's a really good scene yeah and he's getting piano wire. Um, G Gary says, Gary Alford says his son, Ian is uncannily like him. Did you see? Yeah. yeah. 
I saw that. It's amazing guess, how yeah. I guess he's he doing a play like or something, him. right? Yeah, I think it's in in uh, in London. I think that's where they're doing it. The Daily Jaws guys, who uh, <laughs> I, I've I've known uh, those guys for a while now. I, I just on Instagram and everything, and uh, uh-huh. they're they're huge Jaws uh, fanatics like I am, and we uh, talk every once in a while. And I, I, I think they've seen the the play, and I, I'd love to see it. It'd be great. Yeah, obviously, Jason. Yes. Does Charlie follow the Daily Jaws from the UK? Of yeah. course. There, there you go. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, let's talk about uh, this, um, which is. Hold on, let me find this. The location that they shot the film in, and here you are. Tell us a little bit about what's happening here. Uh, let me see the. I can't see the photo yet. It's coming it's, up. It'll come up. The magic of. Um, there you go. Oh, so though. Okay, so this was like in 1993 or 94. Um, and okay, so Radio City, uh, we're gonna do a special screening of Jaws, back in 93 or 94. I forget when it was, and Peter Benchley was gonna. Uh, be there too and he was going to come out and and speak before the movie and just you know talk about the writing of jaws the making of jaws so i said okay i'm going to plan a trip around this that's it that's radio city um and i went to martha's vineyard and i spent a couple of days there and uh did that big you know the ferry that takes you from uh, sure. Rhode island the one the uh, one you see the one you see in the film right the, that's, that's the one, one. That's the one, yeah. man. Yeah, and yeah. I, I stayed in Edgarstown, and I went to every location that I could find because nobody knew anything when I got there. The only thing that huh. – the only person that I met from the movie Jaws, there was a restaurant, and the actor who played uh, Alex Kittner was the manager there. Is that and, right? Yeah, and they had a Kittner burger on the menu, and it was like a <laughs> – <laughs> That's great. <laughs> But it was like a fillet of fish, so I had to scout each place and just find it on my own. So I I went there. That's the estuary. That's where the the pond. Um, shark, shark, yeah. right? <laughs> and uh, it was awesome. And then when you walk around the town, dude, nothing was changed. It was all the same. <clears throat> and uh, I was just in 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 heaven because basically. It, being there kind of put me in the movie, you know. I was transporting to the to Amity Island. It was, it was it was so silly and so goofy, but hey, <clears throat> I got a kick out of it. What, what, is this this location here? Is this where um where uh where she washes up that first scene? Yeah, of the partying? Yes. yeah. So that's where they told me it was like around there, but you can't there's no fence the little fences that they had that that's not yeah. there <clears throat> but um that was that part right i got there. it i i I, um, I picked it up yeah i think it's called gayhead cliffs i think that's huh. where it was and there's the tower there too um but i don't i don't know i mean all the stores were basically the same um and there was a uh, on the corner. There's the store of Black Dog. I think it was called. That was oh, that that's there. I remember that the Black Dog cafe, the back restaurant. Yep. The, oh yeah, that yeah, that's that, there. That, um, a lot of the restaurants yep. are there, and that's basically that's where the, that's the shot where he pulls he he drives down the street and yeah, exactly. And he gets the supplies and he tells sure. Hendrix, you know, yep. beach is closed and let Polly do the printing and all that stuff. <laughs> right, um, right. So <laughs> no, they'll have right Polly. There. They'll have Polly do it. Right. Let Polly do the printing. What's wrong with my print? So, have Polly um, do it. Yeah. So yeah, I, and that was it. I spent a couple of days there. Went to a bunch of bars, and it was it was fun. It was silly, but it was fun. Yeah, that that's that that's uh, that's awesome. Let's um let's talk a little bit about um uh, some of the uh, go go like actual some, some scenes in the film. And stuff like that. And you know, the, the first thing that you hear in this film, like these are off, these are off my notes. Movie comes up from black. The first thing you hear is the music. And it really sets the table, man. It, it was like, I mean, it's still black. The film, you know, it's it's not even up from black. You hear that 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 John Williams, you know, film score. I mean, that 
any 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 can you give us any perspective on 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 that music i think the 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 music i don't think the movie would have been as successful without that john music uh john williams music yeah. um he sets the tone for that movie and the movie actually scares you even going into water when you hear the music it kind of does a little something to your to your to your brain um so i would say that the john williams music is just two notes yeah but it totally sets the mood for that movie and yeah. it's funny whenever you hear that music in the movie you know the shark is there and when you don't hear it there's there is no shark in the water you know yeah which is yeah. very clever too and it, it, it's, it's that very hitchcockian very very, Hitch, very hitchcockian yeah. And yeah. I think Spielberg was a huge fan of Hitchcock. And, oh, yeah. Um, but the one thing I'll say about John Williams is if you listen to uh, Stravinsky, um, uh, you know, the Rites of Passage, uh, Rites of Spring, um, sure. there's a part in that where I I think he got Jaws from that that piece. It's okay. very, very similar. Really? It's just bump, 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 bump. It's the same thing. And it's yeah. like, hmm, that sounds like Jaws. Hey, listen, like Zappa said, there are no original ideas, right? No, there's only, only 12 notes. <laughs> there's only 12 notes, right? Uh, the music is the first thing you hear in the film. John Williams' film score earned him an Academy Award and was later ranked the sixth greatest score by the American Film Institute. Spielberg later said that without Williams' score, the film would have only been half as successful. And according to Williams, it jump-started his career. The main shark theme, a simple alternating pattern of two notes, uh, variously identified as E and F or F and F sharp, became a classic piece of suspense music synonymous with approaching danger. Williams described the theme as, quote, grinding away at you just as a shark would do. Instinctual, relentless, unstoppable. Exactly. Now, I'm, surprised, I'm surprised that it's, it is number six. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what Larry said. Only six. <laughs> what's what's ahead of it? Right. You know, it's like wow. I, I would say that that music is responsible for the fear. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And and I guess you know it. You know, after that, I mean, Spielberg went with John Williams. You know, time and time oh, yeah. again. After that, I mean, that's his go-to guy, right? I was, um, I've seen John Williams perform three times. Uh, he does a thing called the night at the movies. Oh, and, wow. um, and yeah, I saw, I saw it two times here in Chicago. I saw it once in New York and, um, he plays with the orchestra and they show you clips uh, of the movie, but he plays, they play everything live in front of you. So wow. when, when those songs come out <laughs> and you're you're there experiencing it it's like this is just amazing right now um so when i watched him do he did like two of the jaws he of course he did the main theme and then he did uh one of the other ones off to sea you know when the boat oh yeah yeah leaves. oh love i love that when 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 they, when they pull out of the when they pull when they pull out of the harbor there i love it man it's called yeah. i think it's called off to sea and it's just yeah, such a sure. great it's great piece of music great um, scene Great, 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 and uh, you know, of course, he's he's done. He, he did Star Wars, um, uh, uh, Ra e uh, Raiders e of the Lost e e e Raiders of the Lost Stark. He did uh, what was the other one? Jurassic Park. It was just yeah, yeah. A, a night of just like this guy yeah. did all these songs. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, love that scene when 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 they they pull out of the the the, the harbor there. And the and and the camera goes through the through the the oh, through the man. jaws. Yeah, that's come, come on, that's just, great. There's some there's, I, there's some really great filmmaking in this film. Like if 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 like if you're a young person or or it, there's just some really great, just you know, uh, so, like like um, meat and potatoes filmmaking in this thing. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're an up and coming filmmaker, this would have to be one of the movies that you watch. Uh, yeah. You know, to learn a lot about storytelling, movie making, and how uh, the other thing is editing. The way this movie is edited is just, it's great. I mean, and then Spielberg was just such a smart guy and he surrounded himself with smarter people, you know what I mean? And just experts. And yeah, this movie is just, this movie making 101. 
Well, you know, now that we touched on the editing thing, I, I'll take the ball and run with it. That was Vera Fields. Vera Fields. Um, Vera Fields, editor. She previously um, did Paper Moon and American Graffiti. She won Best Editing Oscar for Jaws. So she won an Oscar. John Williams oh, won man. an Oscar. Spielberg didn't even get nominated. No, which was completely like, how can you not nominate the director if the movie is getting Best Movie? Yeah. Well, th there's a clip. I saw a clip of him. There's actually a clip uh, of him. I see Frankie Carter just said that too. What's yeah. up, Frank? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, th I saw a clip on YouTube. They filmed Spielberg when they, when, when they made the uh, Academy Award nominations. Right. And he is like visible. He's like that. We're, we're like, he was pissed. Yeah. He was crushed. He was, he but, was crushed. You know, he got the, la he got the last laugh. Oh yeah, for, for sure. Um, so she won a Best Editing Oscar. Her contributions to the six Fields' contribute con contributions to this success were widely acknowledged. She received an Academy Award and an American Cinema Editors Award for Best Editing. Within a year of the film's release, she had been appointed as Vice President for Feature Production at Universal Pictures. She was thus among the first women to ever enter upper-level management in the entertainment industry. Her career as an executive at Universal continued until her death in 1982 at 64. Jaws was the last film she edited. Crazy, dude. Isn't it? That's wild. That's, that's wild to, to, to think that. And then she went on from there to be like one of the one of Universal's yeah. higher people. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. But I, I'm shocked that she she died. It's kind of that's kind of young. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. And 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 you know. Uh, you, you better believe that she greenlighted a lot of those Spielberg projects that we just talked about. <laughs> right. she, oh, oh, E.T.? Yeah, Raiders? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. No, do you know? It's funny. I, I watch Raiders of the Lost Ark. I watched the two, the first and the I haven't second. Se I haven't uh, seen those two in a long time. Uh, two weeks ago, and I was so excited again watching it because I hadn't seen it in a while, and it was just, again, just storytelling. Yeah. And... And you know Harrison Ford is just awesome in, in that movie. Yeah, for, for sure. Um, going back to back to my film notes, uh, this the, the the note on on this scene here, and and my my notes on this is this was absolutely gruesome. This 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 opening scene when we watched it the other night, I was it, it's really really. A disturbingly gruesome scene, um, really yeah. disturbing. Yeah, and it's the first thing you see. It's the first thing you see. And uh, the, yeah, and the thing about it is, like, what if it? What if you would have seen the shark yeah. at this point? Um, would it have ruined the whole thing? Because the 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 element of the thing that scared me the most is like you didn't see it, yeah. and your imagination was kind of like, what is going on? You know, um, but if you read the book, the book describes it as he's just taking pieces and pulling her and stuff, yeah. um, which is basically what's happening here. And the way they shot this, uh, uh, just reading about it and, and watching so many documentaries about Jaws is like they had her in a harness. And I guess they were pulling her from left to right, kind of. Uh, it was kind of violent because Spielberg wanted it to look violent. And and man, she she's awesome in this in this scene, you know. Yeah, she's she's um, Spielberg was was forced um, due to the unreliable mechanical shar sharks. They forced Spielberg to shoot many scenes so that the, so that the shark was only hinted at. Yeah, only hinted at. The and the opening the opening had the shark devouring Chrissy, but it was rewritten so that it would be shot with with her being dragged and yanked with the cables to simulate an, an, an attack. Um, the forced restraint is widely thought to have added to the film's suspense. As Spielberg put it years later, quote, the film went from a Japanese Saturday matinee horror flick to more of a Hitchcock. The less you see, the more you get thriller. It's, it's, it's amazing because um, like in the book too, she feels something go by her. Uh, it's and, scary, man. And she reaches down and she doesn't feel her leg. 
Yeah. Like the bottom portion of her leg. But again, Susan Blackenity, that's the actress who played yeah. Chrissy. And she and she um, does she does those Chilla Theater cons and stuff. Yeah. I see her yeah. yeah. But that scene also that scene wasn't shot at night, it was shot in the day. And they did something to the film to make it look like it was shot at, in uh, in in the dark. It's interesting. I have a note. I love how all the nighttime stuff looks. <laughs> Yeah. I, I do. I love, I, I don't know, you know, what film stock they used or what they did, but I love how the nighttime, the nighttime stuff looks in this film. And, and another one of my favorite scenes, which is shot at night is when like the bounty hunters go out on the dock, you know, with, with the pot roast. Oh, yeah, the, I love that scene, man. I love it too. And it's just like, it's so it's, it's that Spielberg humor in that scene too. Yeah. That that really makes it work, um, and it's like this is my wife's holiday roast, you know. <laughs> so if 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 I don't come back with something, right, I'm, I'm, I'm I may as well die out there with the shark, <laughs> you know. So that just those little things that he always puts in his movies, like to you know kind of set you up for the next thing that's going to happen, you know. And and like we mentioned, the music. It's like when he's swimming back to the dock, oh, and you yeah. hear the music, and and then. And then just and you you know you see his feet slipping on the dock and they pull him up and the music sort of like fades down like just. But that yeah. the one the one scene in that when when they when the dock breaks and it's just yeah. going out to sea and then it's like the shark discovers that there's someone there and then it spins around you know sure. and, then the, and then the music gets really intense yeah. and it's like dude that's a scary scene. Yeah, it's it's that, that's in my nose. It's one of my that's one of my favorite scenes, man. It's oh, and, and and it's interesting. I I got to look at because like one of my notes is I love how the nighttime stuff looks. And I guess yeah. they used I I you know I got to look that up. So what you know Kodak film stock they used and, and how they did it. And it's it's also in the opening scene when Chrissy runs out on the beach after the party and like she goes out into the water and it just it just it looks great. And I, yeah, they, because they just, I would um. Back in the day, there was uh, the, the two books that I had when I was younger because mm -hmm. I, I was a fanatic on Jaws. There was the Jaws log, which sure, I remember was that. Carl Gottlieb did Carl that, Gottlieb, and then, right. and then uh, Edith Blake did one, um, and that was another book, uh, the Making of Jaws. And there was scenes, and, and like I saw the Chrissy character, like put this harness, harness too on her, and but it was it was at daylight. I'm like, how to Right. This wasn't shot at in the day; it was shot at night. But then, when you watch the documentary, they talk about this filter that was put on the film to make it look like it was night. Sure. Now, here's a shot of you and and, and the great Carl Gottlieb. Tell us a yeah. little bit about about what his role is was uh, in this film. Well, I didn't even think that he thought he was going to be in the movie as the 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 reporter or the journalist in the movie. I forget what uh, how Spielberg put him in, but. He kind of wrote a part of the screenplay, right? And th those are the stories that Spielberg talks about. They would meet in a cabin and do rewrites and stuff like that. The and mostly the night before they were shooting, right? Mostly the night before they were shooting. So yeah, that was cool to meet uh, Carl Gottlieb. Uh, he's just a big part of that Jaws world too, you know. And also, there's the um, I'm looking for my. There's also uh, John Mil Mil Milnes, Mil Milius, John uh, Milius, John yeah. Milius. He he did some. It was interesting um, doing my homework. A lot of people had had their pen on this on this script rewrite. There was like six or seven people that sort of a little bit of this person, a little bit of that person. You know, there's a lot going on. But didn't uh, wasn't uh, John Milius the one who did the um, the scene with the uh, the Indianapolis, the Indianapolis, yeah. Correct. Uh, uh, he he wrote that, and wasn't wasn't Robert Shore drunk when he did that scene? Yes, he was uh, apparently. And but they but I I did see that Robert Shore had a big rewrote rewrote it as well. I mean that that's that's his star turn in this film is that Indianapolis uh -huh. scene, man. I mean it is it is, and 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 if you and, and if you're a bit of a history buff, which I am, a World War II history buff. That, that scene is is really really um 
It's and, intense. It's yeah. intense. And the thing that I love about that scene is, is like he's looking at Brody as he's telling him about it. And then Hooper's sitting back. Like Hooper's just like, wow, you were on the Indianapolis, you know? And I love and how it just I, goes quiet. Because when you said earlier about he was 52, um, and then I guess that makes more sense, you know, because Hooper is young. He's a young kid, you know. So I guess when he heard that Quint was on the Indianapolis, I think that's when he got a lot more respect for him, you know, because before that he just couldn't stand them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's, uh, that's all true. The Indianapolis is, is, is another horrifying story that they were delivering the atomic bomb to Tinian. And it was, it was such a um, top secret mission that when they were torpedoed and sank, n nobody knew that they, that, that they were there. Right. The Hiroshima bomb. Oh God. Unbelievable. So yeah, but that's a, that's a great, um, that's a great scene. Yeah, it, it in, is. In that movie. Yep. And, and yes, uh, John M M Milius, uh, was behind the whole Conan thing. He, he, he wrote the script and I think he directed the first Conan film as well, you know? So, so that said, Hey, let me do a, a sponsor, um, a little sponsor break here for a couple minutes and, and announce a couple uh, upcoming shows. Hmm? Jaws cereal, get it at your local. <laughs> <laughs> Is that way? Let me see that. Let me see that. <laughs> I got this at a convention, uh, wow. about a month ago and it's real. I like I it like, says feed. It says feeding time on it. I know. I love it. That is awesome. But, <laughs> but it's, it, it's multigrain. Just so you know, guys, it's multigrain. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Back back in the day, it, it would be sugar. It'd be like frosted flakes. <laughs> yeah. But now it's multigrain. It's multigrain. <laughs> oh shit! All right, man. I'll see you in a minute. All right. Bro. All right.